Now we have to start the peritoneum from somewhere uh, what we discussed in the in the uh, in the embryology part when we were discussing the development of foregut. We said in the foregut development that stomach is one portion which is not only having the dorsal mesogastrium, it also has the ventral mesogastrium. And where does that ventral mesogastrium comes from? It was coming from the septum transversum. So we have a septum transversum, and in the craniocaudal folding, it will come down and will form the ventral mesogastrium. What I'm saying is, if you remember this diagram there, which we discussed, that if this was the stomach, so we have these two layers of the. These are the two layers of mesogastrium. There is a ventral mesogastrium and if you remember we also discussed that within the two layers of ventral mesogastrium the liver will develop and in the left layer of dorsal mesogastrium, left layer of dorsal mesogastrium spleen will develop. So liver and spleen were in the ventral and dorsal mesogastrium. In the further development, when the liver will grow in size and will also come toward the right side, this liver will come to the right side, the spleen will go toward the left side and they will grow in size. Now you have to imagine the section in which this will rotate like this. Now guys look at this, we have a space on this side and we have a space on this side. Now when the rotation takes place, when the liver will come to this side, the rotation will take place in this direction, the liver will come like this and spleen will go in this manner. So this space over here, this right space here will be trapped behind the stomach and liver and this space which is trapped behind will be called as the lesser sac and the one which is in front, this space which will come in front will be called as the greater sac. So we need to understand it from here only from the development point of view, liver rotates and come to this side and this right space, this right coelomic cavity here will be trapped posteriorly behind the stomach and that will be called as the lesser sac. So let us look at that section. So if you take a section like this, the transverse section of abdominal cavity, now let us say that is the transverse section there, there is the liver. the stomach, the spleen, the rotation has taken place, the liver has come to this side and the spleen has come to the left side. Forget about the retroperitoneal structure, we do have a retroperitoneal structure there but just forget about them for a second. And there is the fold of peritoneum, so let us say the peritoneum from the abdominal wall in front of the kidneys will be reflected to the spleen, from the spleen to the stomach, from the stomach to the liver and do not connect it to the liver, I will tell you why. Let me stop it here. Yeah, it is covering the liver also, we are not just completing it. So, this is how the peritoneum is now displaced. Just do not be worried about that why stomach and liver is not shown connected. They are connected, but why we are looking at this section? I will tell you why the section look like this. The section looks like this. Let me justify the section first only. The section is looking in this manner because the section is actually taken from the right free margin of lesser momentum. Guys, if this is the stomach here, now let us say if you are seeing it from the front, if that is the stomach, and let us imagine we, ha we have the liver just roughly and there we have the lesser omentum. If you take a section like this, that is why this look in this manner. Now please compare these two sections. We said stomach, there is a stomach. Can you see this lesser omentum here? That is lesser omentum. Can you see a gap over there and that is why this gap and then the liver, the liver. The section is actually taken from the right free margin of lesser momentum. Please write above the section that this section is from the right free margin. This is a TS, 
ट्रांसफर सेक्शन फ्रॉम राइट फ्री मार्जिन ऑफ लेसर मोमेंटम राइट फ्री मार्जिन ऑफ लेसर मोमेंटम That's the right free margin of lesser momentum, and there the section is taken from. <coughs> now, if you look at these peritoneal folds here, now what peritoneal fold is this one? This peritoneal fold, if you remember, was the derivative of the dorsal mesogastrium, called as lino-renal ligament. That's the lino-renal ligament. this here which was connecting the spleen and the stomach is gastrosplenic ligament and undoubtedly this is lesser omentum just writing lo that is lesser omentum so guys whatever space you appreciate here behind the stomach and lesser omentum whatever is trapped in here this is the lesser sac this place here is the lesser sac i'm just pointing the lesser sac this all is lesser sac lesser sac also called as the omental bursa lesser sac or omental bursa is behind the stomach and the lesser omentum this was straight first and when it rotated in this manner the right space this right space is now trapped behind the lesser omentum and stomach and is forming the lesser sac <coughs> rest everything here is the greater sac whatever is unshaded is all greater sac this everything is greater sac and look at the spleen where the spleen is projecting we said the spleen will develop from the in the left layer of dorsal mesogastrium and because it was developing from the left layer of dorsal mesogastrium so it is projecting into which sac greater sac see when you think about the gross anatomy you will say spleen is behind the uh, stomach right but uh, think about it and what is there behind the stomach lesser sac but spleen is actually not in the lesser sac spleen is projecting into the greater sac although it is almost behind the stomach because it is developing from this left layer of dorsal mesogastrium now we will talk about this relations of lesser sac uh, in the next section but one very important uh, thing which we need to note here and the extremely extremely important relations that is of epiploic foramen the only connection of the greater sac and the lesser sac is the epiploic foramen and what exactly is the location of epiploic foramen it's not on the side of the lesser omentum it is behind the lesser omentum this is epiploic foramen behind the right free margin of lesser omentum is the epiploic foramen the only communication between the lesser sac and the greater sac so anything has to go from the greater sac to lesser sac can only go through epiploic foramen <clears throat> and that is also the site that is also the way how the internal hernia take place in here the intestinal content from the greater sac can herniate into the lesser sac through the epiploic foramen and this type of internal hernia is actually kind of headache for the surgeons why because you cannot increase the size of the opening you cannot increase the size of the epiploic foramen to reduce this hernia the relations of the epiploic foramen are so damn important if you look at the anterior posterior superior inferior relation the anterior relation will be by the portal triad posterior relation is by the inferior vena cava superiorly we have caudate lobe below we have first part of duodenum so let's talk about the relations of epiploic foramen or also called as foramen of winslow <clears throat> epiploic foramen or foramen of winslow <clears throat> to understand the relations of the epiploic foramen i need to take this epiploic foramen out i need to take this portion only this portion separately please pay attention this is the part that we will take separately here and to look into the relation so let me just rub this labeling here so that i can draw it here only so guys this is the lesser momentum 
that is the right free margin of lesser momentum. In the right free margin of lesser momentum, we have portal triad, which includes portal vein posteriorly. hepatic artery anteriorly and toward the left <coughs> and bile duct anteriorly and toward the right. The portal triad in the right free margin of lesser momentum that is the portal triad and that is how exactly the structures are anteriorly and toward the right bile duct anteriorly and toward the left is the hepatic artery. That was the epiploic foramen. <coughs> the posterior relation of epiploic foramen, the very important posterior relation of epiploic foramen being the inferior vena cava. the right suprarenal gland the right suprarenal gland and the 12th thoracic vertebrae the 12th thoracic vertebrae so, you can clearly see the important relations anteriorly and posteriorly. We have portal triad here, portal vein, the most immediate anterior relation is portal tri, a portal vein and most immediate posterior relation is the inferior vena cava. Apart from that, we also have hepatic uh, artery and bile duct anteriorly and right suprarenal gland and T12 vertebrae, body of the T12 vertebrae posteriorly. So, as you can see, that is the anterior and posterior relation. Superior inferior relation can be understood from this diagram here. Now coming to this here, the posterior superior inferior relation is by the caudate lobe of liver. If I just imagine there is a caudate lobe here, and this is first part of duodenum. That is the first part of duodenum. <coughs> Zoom out. So, these are the anterior relations all these, all these are anterior relation, all these are posterior relations, caudate lobe is the superior relation and first part of duodenum is the inferior relation of the epiploic foramen. Please note these are the very, very important relations of epiploic foramen and asked many times in the exam. <coughs> 